Hello, everyone. So I'm Andre, and I'll be presenting our work, uh, Breaking Security Critical Voice Authentication. Voice interfaces are basically everywhere now. Our voice assistants, our phones, smart devices, and most recently, they've become a major component of our access control systems. Specifically, voice interfaces and access control tasks appear in the form of speaker verification systems. When you contact a service provider, either over the phone or while issuing transactions using our app, all you need to do now is speak. It's that easy. Well, you're prompted with some random phrase that you're just uh, supposed to repeat in your own voice, which will then be compared to your previously stored uh, voice print on the system and verify your identity. Pretty convenient, right? But there's a catch. So the problem is that while these, um, like, well, there are a lot of claims about these systems being very secure, they actually lack these security guarantees that more traditional and perhaps annoying uh, like platforms like Passwords, for example, enjoy. In fact, the community became of the vulnerabilities of such systems when spoofing attacks started to emerge. So in such attacks, the attacker only needs a few minutes of speech in their victim's voice so that they're actually able to build models that can produce audio samples in the victim's voice that match in any text of choice and fake in that previously believed to be unforgeable voice print, and thereby bypassing speaker verification altogether. So to remedy this, and given the unprecedented popularity of voice authentication, what happened was that the industry and community resorted to what all of us in computer science love doing, which is batching. So as opposed to verification systems that you might be familiar with from daily tasks in your homes, security critical voice authentication actually relies on a, like, an additional component that is known as the spoofing countermeasures. So what happens is that these systems are actually tasked with telling uh, fake and legitimate samples apart. So they operate in conjunction with the speaker verification systems we've discussed so far, and with the speech attack systems, whose task is to basically transcribe these, uh, audio, uh, like these audio clips provided by the user just to, uh, like, uh, like to basically validate their text and ensure that no replay attacks are being attempted. So when the user provides their <coughs> phrase, these systems are invoked jointly on the sample to reach a final decision, accept or reject. Now, as is common in secure authentication protocols, service providers enforce some additional restrictions to further mitigate the threat of potential attacks. They limit the number of allowed failed attempts and response time and make sure that their system's parameters and architectures remain hidden or black box. So all these measures combined actually really do complicate the attacker's task. And while there have been a lot of amazing works describing how speaker verification can be bypassed, actually, uh, vo like security critical voice authentication systems remain impermeable. And this is because, for example, fake speech is made effective due to the spoofing countermeasure we've been discussing so far. While on the other hand, common black box attacks or adversarial examples from the machine learning field are also not applicable in this case. For instance, transferability-based attacks, wherein the attacker optimizes sample against some surrogate model and then use these samples to attack the target system, have been shown to be of very limited applicability in the audio domain, as, example, uh, as opposed to the image domain, for instance. So these are not really realistic here. And finally, the query-based attacks, wherein you would basically query the target system multiple times, tens or hundreds or even thousands of times, to optimize your sample, and then uh, get a successful attack sample are also not realistic because uh, of the limit on the query budget that we already outlined here in these uh, threat models to prevent such attacks. So the result is what we have so far is that to date these platforms have remained, uh, have remained impermeable, establishing them as the de facto authentication standard and leading to them being deployed by numerous banks all around the world. Which begs us a question, are they really that secure? Well, as you might have guessed, the answer is unfortunately no, which is the topic of our work. So the main problem with these systems is that their core assumption regarding the unforgeability uh, of their like, voice print 
that they talk about, has been breached. And from that moment onward, we're basically dealing with compromised systems. So basically, we already have these attacks, or voice spoofing attacks, that break all these components of such systems, except for these spoofing countermeasures which seem to be the last hurdle that basically stops attackers. So we set out to investigate what makes these systems so special. And basically our research was motivated by the following two main hypotheses. First, if these systems are, uh, like have the ability to basically teleport or differentiate between fake and legitimate speech, then what's to stop an attacker from doing so themselves and then basically eliminate all these differences while preserving the content and the quality of the audio so that they can actually like wind up with samples that bypass all three components simultaneously. So this brings us to the next step, which is the goal of this work, where what we do is basically we uh, want to realize such transformations that are able of eliminating all these uh, differences between you know, fake and uh, human speech in an intuitive way, so that because, of, because they are so intuitive and ubiquitous, they're basically able to defeat all spoofing countermeasures without being uh, tailored to like one or two specific systems and being completely black box. So basically, in a, uh, like a pipeline integrated in our module would look like this. First, a state-of-the-art uh, fake speech component will be used to craft such um, like high-quality fake speech audio, which will be inevitably detectable uh, because spoofing countermeasures can detect such fake speech. But then our attack comes into play and optimizes these samples by eliminating all these machine cues so that it will be able to defeat any voice authentication platform. So now, our challenge becomes the realization of such universal transformations that eliminate these differences between the two types of speech. And our first set of transformations, perhaps like unexpectedly, targets the non-speech segments and audio samples. So if we compare the temporal representations of a real human speech sample, which is on the right, sorry, the label's missing, but it's on the right, to the fake uh, speech audio, which is on the left, it's easy to notice that the silent segments the red circles, are actually much thicker in the human speech sample on the right. Let me assure you that this is, uh, this is no coincidence. Because these real samples being recorded with uh, imperfect devices and in noisy environments basically already makes them noise prone and injects those like, static noises into these samples. Whereas on the other hand, spoofing algorithms solely focus on the generation of perfect speech. Uh, and this high quality of speech tr strives to eliminate any additional uh, noise, which they're not to, uh, trained to mimic accurately. Therefore, our first set of transformations eliminates these non-speech cues by replacing the leading and trailing silences with those from natural, uh, with those from natural samples, trimming extremely long inward uh, void silence intervals and introducing an echo effect into the speech resembling real world settings. Second set of transformations target spectral representations of these audio samples. As can be seen from this figure, um, the majority of energy in uh, the majority of energy in human speech is concentrated in lower parts of the spectrum, where all the vowels reside. However, interestingly, intelligibility of speech is highly affected by the central part of the spectrum, where all the consonants live. Due to this energy distribution, audio systems, and specifically spoofing countermeasures, would assign larger weights to lower frequency components, making them far more accurate in this region while being significantly less accurate at the, uh, at the intelligibility critical region at the center of the spectrum. Therefore, the set of transformations targets this phenomenon and by amplifying the amplitude of the central components at the expense of lower frequencies to increase these systems' dependence on regions of lower certainty, leading them to misclassify. Our sixth transformation targets biases in the training data of spoofing algorithms. When trained on a specific set of data, these will naturally be highly affected by artifacts in this data set. Specifically, device imperfections unique to this data set and speakers with the specific pitch dominating it may lead to the algorithms exhibiting unnatural frequency components and its output signals all along the time axis, which can be spotted by spoofing countermeasures as those will not appear uh, in realistic samples. Therefore, we apply what is called spectral gating, which filters out such continuously occurring components in time that do not 
convey useful information. Finally, we apply traditional adversarial base optimization. Yet, the caveat is that while we target spoofing countermeasures, here we optimize a sample using a speaker verification model. And so this is not a transferability-based attack. In fact, our hypothesis is that given a fake sample and a natural reference voice print by the victim, the speaker verification system will output a non-perfect similarity score. And we attribute to the, this uh, imperfection in the similarity between the, uh, the two samples to one uh, coming from a human while the other being machine generated. Thus, by optimizing the sample in this manner, the voice print will even be more deeply engraved in that fake sample, and we will be eliminating machine artifacts, leading to it becoming more natural and having the ability to actually bypass spoofing countermeasures. So this brings me to the uh, evaluations. Basically, we include numerous configurations with different representatives of the three, th uh, three systems from both the literature and the industry, all top uh, systems. And uh, we make sure to include systems that operate on different sets of uh, front ends and features to uh, show that our attacks basically, basically are agnostic to those. Uh, we use 474 hand-picked high-quality samples by 48 users generated using 13 uh, state-of-the-art spoofing algorithms that uh, we use to, to optimize using our transformations. And we transmit those uh, over the realistic settings such as apps and phone calls. And again, like we said, we do not, have, we do not require any interactive queries with the target. And to show how efficient this is, we do not basically require adaptive queries. And we only require up to three uh, or six attempts only uh, for the attacks, with each of them requiring less than four seconds. And finally, we have the success rates that unequivocally show uh, that uh, the efficacy of our attack and basically its ability, uh, the vulnerability of modern uh, security critical voice authentication to it, with it achieving success rates as high as 100% up from 0% for spoofing attacks without our uh, adversarial optimizations. So all in all, this is our attack, and it achieves all the security, it defeats security critical environments in its strictest form, and it's up to you to decide whether you want to adopt it or not. Thank you. Hi, uh, very nice talk. Chen Wang from RSU. Uh, I have a question about the, how you utilize the ICO uh, in your uh, defense system, uh, especially the user we don't know the user location uh, again, in, uh, related to the, 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 the microphone. Uh, so we don't know the, like the, what the ICO could be. Is that possible the adversary just uh, simulate the ICO like channel and then uh, generate the, the, the sound with the ICO effect? So you're, you're talking about a specific class of like liveness detection systems, uh, which are basically called like active systems, right? Um, um, like the systems that we're talking about are the more uh, prevalent and uh, basically generic systems that are called passive systems that only analyze the the only uh, the only thing that they analyze is the actual waveforms and like uh, spectrograms of these uh, like the recorded systems, and do not like rely on sensors or like placement of these uh, sensors wherever. So we were basically basically just uh, like all our attacks, um, like considered samples from the ASV spoof data set that were recorded for that task, where it's just like assumed that the attacker is speaking into their phone from wherever, and then you can basically analyze those samples. OK, uh, so you don't, uh, um, for example, how, how to differentiate whether this is a, has an echo effect or completely has no echo impact? So with, with, uh, with, with the user sound, uh, user's voice, do you need to differentiate whether there is, uh, there is a binary classifier to, to determine whether there's echo effect or not, or this? Uh... No, well, we don't have a classifier that does that. We took this, like, systems that basically tell you, like, the only thing that spoof and countermeasures do is they rely on, like, a variety of features, and apparently echo is one of them, although it is implicit. But what it does is it just tells you whether it's human or machine generated, right? Now, apparently, the echo being missing from these samples, because when you like manufacture a sample, it's not like received at the microphone 
microphone at different times, right? So there is no echo. So apparently it is a telltale that is important for these algorithms to make their decisions. And it being missing is what enables those systems often to tell you that, yeah, this sample is actually fake. So what we did was we actually introduced the echo into these samples to make them look more realistic and then defeat those systems. Thank you. Welcome.